You know what's unique about this event, and probably the first of its kind in this sense, I have never seen so many policymakers descend on a basically a crypto conference before, which tells me policy is coming. Now, Lumis is here, obviously, with her baseline package, as she calls it. I've had a chance to meet with her. Uh, it's really a well-intended bipartisan idea, and it would give some kind of infrastructure to more clinical mandates later. But I think just getting this presented, getting it tabled on a bipartisan basis would be very important. Now, optimistically, I would say after the midterms, we'll start to focus on this because right now, uh, I'm sure the president has lots on his mind and other issues, but and crypto is not one of them, but it will become because this is a very early stage industry. But here's my prediction. Within 10 years, this will be the 12th sector of the S&P 500. Why? Because there's so much productivity enhancement available. Remember, crypto is speculative in some ways, and I get that, but there's also a lot of productivity in payment systems and, and blockchain ledgers and transparency, accountability, reduction of fees. All of these technologies are available. However, we need policy, and that's what really we're looking at here today. The first time ever where you've got policymakers meeting with the private sector trying to figure out a path to keep America competitive in this brand new sector. Welcome to the Crypto Teacher. And guys, you know, I come back with that video just to make you think. And we have Kevin O'Leary stating that regulation is coming. And we know regulation is coming this year. We have ISO at the end of the year, but we know it's going to take three years for ISO to be fully implemented. And midterms are right around the corner. So we know the Hegelian dialectic is going to be in full effect. Remember I told you, if the debt ceiling doesn't get raised to unlimited, the government is definitely going to get shut down. And remember the crypto teacher told you. And Kevin O'Leary says it's going to take about 10 years for crypto to be part of the S&P sector. But guys, we know in less than two years, cryptocurrency will definitely be implemented. Well, remember what Jerome Powell stated. They've been working on this for decades. And we have Jim Cramer pushing the Hegelian dialectic. Says do not invest in Chinese stocks. Chinese stocks are manipulated. And we know this has to be a joke. We know BlackRock, Vanguard, they own everything. Aladdin is controlling the stock market globally. And we know over the next 10 years, we'll have no growth in the United States but over in the emerging markets, they're going to rise. And that's including Chinese stocks. Remember, investing is looking 5, 10, 15 years down the road. And we have the SEC movie continues. Says they're going to be investigating the BNB token. Now we know Binance is illegal in the United States. I don't know how the SEC is going to be suing them. But guys, we know I started this channel during the bear market. When BNB was $20, I told you it was going to keep climbing because it's there for a bigger agenda. And remember the crypto teacher told you because he knows when it comes to the new road order, it's all planned out. Y'all have a wonderful day. Hey, Jim, we're looking, by the way, at uh, Didi. I don't know if you saw this, up over 50% today. Uh, you should see that flow through at least marginally to, to Uber, which, of course, has actually moved uh, nicely this week or last week, but on a relative basis to, to where it had been, maybe not. Um, do, 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 what do you expect there? Well, look, I think that the, PR, the People's Republic of China, the government periodically tries to suck us in. Uh, they always succeed. There'll be some people who come on our air. People have lost your money consistently, and they'll be back saying, you know what, the market you want to be in is China. They have no idea how the Chinese Communist government likes to manipulate the stocks to get us in, get our capital, probably do some deals, and then say, <laughs> um, America, you don't know how we work. And it just seems to happen regularly. Uh, it's a very ill-advised strategy, but it just... these The people who uh, insist on investing in that area, you've got to take your money away from them because they're fools. We're going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go. But clearly, we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're, going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leverage to technology, and I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers.
In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. This effort. And China has big plans for this. They intend to seed um, their digital yuan into the global environment by giving it away to visitors at next winter's Olympics. When they arrive at the airport, they're going to get di yuan digital wallets. They're going to receive digital yuan. They're going to use it uh, throughout their visits to Beijing, and then they're going to take it back to their home countries. They see this as a huge advantage. Why? Because who controls the underlying protocols, who un controls the underlying standards of the future of money will control the future of money. The most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come. Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids' books. You know I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis. Whether it's your job, whether it's in your community, we have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share, but this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figure. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends. So therefore, we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part one, King Yahshua and Grandma Tim. Face the village. Part two, King Yahshua and Grandma Tim. Face New York. Long COVID 33. Part three, King Yahshua and Grandma Tim goes to China. It's mandatory to get part one, part two, and part three of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.